We see and we hear so much anger and despair, you know, out there. We, we, we hear hopelessness and, and brokenness from and by, well, humanity. We even sometimes wonder, where is God in all of this? Where is he? We, as humanity, as people, well, we act in ways towards each other that, you know, can be just, you know, downright mean. Yeah, we live in a fallen world. We do that sometimes. We say things that we are sorry for after we've said it. And, you know, we have things said to us that just kind of just rock our world to the core. Words and actions, you know, have such an effect on us and, you know, those who are around us. I remember growing up, you know, um, as a kid, and people would say something mean, you know, called, sticks and stones may make my bones, but, you know, names will never hurt me. Well, that is so untrue. It was, you know, just a quick answer to give others, but the trueness in it was that words can and do really hurt some. I probably shared this with, me, with you before. I, I remember a, a children's message illustration that, that I once saw, and it's probably the one that really has stuck with me for my whole life. Now, you see, this pastor came out, you know, it's children's time, and he had this tray, and he had this, this tube of toothpaste. So, you know, he says to the kids, you know, well, what do you got? What do you got? And they're like, well, the kids are like, you got a tray of to toothpaste, you know. So the pastor sort of like said, yeah, you're right. And he took the whole tube of toothpaste and he squirted it all over the tray. And the kids were like, you know, well, that's a mess. The pastor said, well, okay, now, what I want you to do is put the toothpaste back in the, back in the tube, you know. And of course the kids tried, right? Well, he's, it, the toothpaste could not go back in the tube. And then he said, birds are much like that. Once they're said, once they're out there, well, they're out there. And you can't put them back. So, what do we do when we or someone else has emptied the tube of toothpaste all over us. What are we to do when someone has hurt us right down to the core and we're angry and, and, and we're hurt about this? What, what are we to do with that? How are we to get past this point in our journey of life and faith? Is there some example or you know some, some sort of you know illustration like, like that children's message illustration that can help us that we can follow because when we're in the midst of it all we want to all we want to do sometimes is just get even right it happens right we're human <coughs> we want to hurt that person back. We have begun our, our Lenten journey here with one another, our journey to the cross of Calvary. As we journey, well, we are going to take a look at the final words, okay? I like to call them the final phrases of Jesus from the cross. These were the last words of his ministry here on earth. You see, even from the cross, Jesus was still doing ministry, wasn't he? It was the leading up of the climax of his ministry and the reason why he was sent from above. It is to this place that we will stop and ponder as we wait in celebration of his victory over death. <coughs> so, you know, the first of these momentous phrases is found in Luke 22. 23 and 33 through 34a, and they read, 
As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon of Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. When they came to the place of the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals. On his, one on his right, one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Forgiveness can be so hard. You know, unforgiveness has been around for a long time, right? Remember? An eye for an eye and, and, and a tooth for a tooth. Remember those words? Jesus' prayer from the cross, you know, for them, is one of the most powerful illustrations of God's love in all of the Gospels. But there is someone else that is there being forgiven from the cross. You see, it's you and me. We were there. We are included in the them of the cross. The entire human race was there at the foot of the of the foot of Calvary. These words from the cross were ones that rang through all of eternity. He was praying for humanity as well as giving himself as a sacrificial lamb at the same time. His prayer for those who came his prayer was for those who came before him, those who were present with him and those who would come after him. It was not just those around the cross that needed forgiveness. All of humanity needed and needs forgiveness. This is about God's grace and mercy, not about what we can do to be forgiven. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Jesus was praying for God's mercy and grace on all who sin, all those who, you know, do and will do wrong. It was a prayer for us because God knew what we would do, you know, how we would sin, even before we were born. This forgiveness was towards you and to me, before we even took our very first breath. We are forgiven even before we sin. And Jesus said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do, that what they are doing. Now, here's our example of what to do when we are wrong. Not just think, now I want you to think about this just for one moment, okay? If Jesus, who was perfect and knew no wrong, can forgive those before, during, and after this moment in time, well, how can we not forgive those who sin against us? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Forgiveness can be complicated. There are times those people, well, they will never ask for our forgiveness sometimes. Or even repent of what they've done. This is where the difficult to forgive thing comes in. But in order to live a life free for, from resentment and anger, Sometimes we have to just forgive. Think of what the alternative is to forgive. Think about it. It is in these times when we need to pray the model prayer of forgiving others that was modeled from the cross. As he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they are doing. We have begun our Lenten privilege, pilgrimage to the cross. 
my prayer is, is that as we journey, we will learn from the words of Jesus from the cross. My prayer is, is that we are going to come away changed. And my prayer is that we would see the cross of Calvary in new and exciting ways. So, what are we to do with our unforgiveness for those who have wronged us? This is what I want you to do with me right now, if you can. I want you to take a moment and think about people who have wronged you. Perhaps even, you know, write their name on the bulletin in the corner somewhere. Now here's the tough part. <coughs> Would you be willing to join me in the prayer that Jesus prayed for those who crucified them? Pray for those who hurt me. Forgive me and heal me. Amen. Now, you may have to come back to this prayer <coughs> several times and, you know, pray this prayer of forgiveness several times. Every time you feel that anger or that resentment coming back, you know, kind of sneaking back on you, just say, Father, forgive them. It may take time, but eventually, your heart will be healed. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Since you're leaving this afternoon, come on up. Hey, what are we doing? Come here.